Girls, and we are back with our very special guest today, Will Dalton. I don't know what happened. He froze up on me, so I'm going to send him the invite back, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can get him right back into this conversation, all right? So I need you guys to make sure that you guys head on over and subscribe to Style by Stevie Daytime. We are almost at our 500 mark, our very first 500 episode we already hit the goal of 400 but make sure you guys are staying tuned we're going to hit that 500 more than never and i'm so excited you guys it's been an amazing journey with you all tuning in each and every day of the week monday through friday to make sure that we are on all right so while we're waiting on will i'm going to let him know that we are on right now fashion dolls so that we can dive right into this convo. Again, pick up where we left off. All right, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue where we left off. We were talking about Will's greatest strengths and weaknesses as an actor. All right, I'm back. I have let me switch my location. Can you hear me? Perfect. And I yeah. Can. Great. Yeah. I was. I was. I'm. I'm in the cultural center and just doing some work. And they. Okay. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. So you were saying All right. your greatest strengths and weaknesses as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. So the what what I would say, like I said, the um, uh, fearlessness probably was is it both one of my greatest uh, strengths and weaknesses and, and and slight optimism right because sometimes i can be overly optimistic about something and it's like okay well, dial it back a little bit brother you know what i mean but yeah that's i would say that if i you know for strengths and weaknesses that, and that's a great question by the way so what are some of your long-term goals throughout your acting career um you know what just just to be continue to be a working actor you know i don't have to be at the i don't have to be at the top you know, I don't, I don't mind being at the bottom, you know, just, I just want to work on, on great projects, work with great people, you know, um, let the work be seen by, by whoever's going to be seen by, like, you know, I don't care about being the most famous or the most rich. I just want to work. That's it. Right. And that's your passion. It's been your passion since you was five years old. You never yeah. Knew yeah. Never knew it. Um, never knew it. Sports always played a major part in my life because I played you know, basketball through all my life, but um, yeah, man, it's just something about being on the stage and, you know, come, becoming somebody else. Yeah. Joe Thornton Jr. in the comments says, your fearlessness was awesome on FBI. Joe, my man, my man, Joe, I appreciate that, brother. I, I greatly appreciate it. it was, that was a fun, uh, <laughs> we, we, took some, we took some risks on, on, on the fearlessness with that one, but that was fun. Now, FBI dropped in 2022. This was like in the midst, I would have to say, the midst of the pandemic. You played the character of Ralphie. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah man, that was, a, that was a fun fun character, uh, Ralphie. Um, it was crazy because I, I actually, on that week, I auditioned for Dick Wolf maybe four times for different shows. Wow. And I got, I, yeah, I got that one. And that was cool. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. But um, the experience that, can you hear that drumming in the background? Yeah. Is it very loud? No. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll rock with it. Okay, they're in there playing Usher, Good Kiss or something. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> okay, let me, let me focus. So, uh, so basically what it is, is, um, yeah, 2022, we shot it in, in August last year, and um, it was just, it was a fun ride, you know, uh, in New York, just being around New York, the vibe of the city, the people, you know, uh, everything there, man. And uh, Ralphie was a cool character because, one, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, I play, he was Puerto Rican. I'm not Puerto Rican. <laughs> so so, so was, it a, was it a little bit of a challenge for you to step outside of your comfort zone? No, no I, just, I just played him. I, I have... I have family and friends from New York, and I have a lot of Puerto Rican friends, and so I just really 
did what they would do, you know, in that situation. I kind of took from certain actors that I know. I said, okay, well, this guy's Puerto Rican. Uh, actor, friend of mine, Cisco Reyes, who played in uh, Next Day Air. He played uh, Jesus in Next Day Air. And a lot of my mannerisms and things come from him, <laughs> from Cisco. So thank you, Cisco. <laughs> okay. okay, and another hit movie that you were interested in loving alongside the beautiful Mega. Now, yeah. you know, FYI, for those of you who do not know, this was an Oscar winning film and brought in a box office total of $12.9 million. Mm -hmm. Do you guys mm -hmm. have any idea that this project is going to be a hit? Because it goes all the way back to like the 1960s and it was about this mm -hmm. generation of people. And I would have to say this, this is a very powerful film with the current state that we're in with racial division. <laughs> The content. The film was right. by Jeff Nichols, an Oscar winning film. He played the character of Virgil. Did you have any idea going in for this role for Virgil that this film was going to be so as it is today? Because it was that's a great. in November of Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. That was a that was a fun time. Um we actually we kinda knew. You know, you, you do a project and you go this this might be one that takes off in a way critically you know critically acclaimed and the box office it really didn't mean too much to us at the time um let me know if this noise is is it, is it okay or can you hear me well i i hear the drumming and i can hear you <laughs> okay but it's, it's not no no you're fine and uh there's some people going by but um but it, it's not drowning me out or anything is it mm -mm. Okay, cool. So, good, good, good. So, so uh, in the um, with with loving, it was it was interesting because um, I auditioned for that for that movie maybe three times. They they kept wanting to see me, and uh, it was one part they sent me and I did it, and then they sent me another role. So I went, and then, so I did that, and then I ended up meeting Jeff, the the writer direct of the movie, and. Um, and he, we, hit, we hit it off and, you know, I, I was in the movie. And when, while we were shooting it, it was just, it's like a historical piece. It's a true story. And you just, you, you get like overwhelmed by the, by the truth of the movie, by, you know what I mean, by everything. Because we shot it in Virginia. Rich. Right where the, yeah, we, we shot it in Richmond. A little, a little, a little outside of where uh, they really were. But we, a lot of the locations, we, you know, matched them really well. So. It was just to be in that time, to be in the space, and then to put those costumes on and put, you know, and get in the character. We, we knew it was, was going to take off. I already knew, I knew Ruth was going to, you know, Oscars were coming for Ruth. I knew Joel was going to get nominated for, you know, Golden Globe, all of those things, because you see it. You see it every day while you're there, and you're like, okay, this is, this is something special, you know. So I'm forever, forever indebted to that movie. Now, uh, another, what's so, what else is so crazy about that is that you had Alano Miller from the hit show Underground, and during that yeah. time, again, racial division, racial disparity, things that we as people of color have faith and endured, like this took place in the 1960. So, did you ever right. find yourself having to tap out of your character and just say, okay, I, I need to regroup? I'm Will now. I'm no longer the character. I'm no longer in the time to yeah, You know, no, not, not, not so much. It, you know, I, I did that beforehand on a project, and it was, it was overwhelming to me, and it was just like, oh my god, like I got to get out of, I got to get out of this guy, and so I just, I told myself like, listen, I'll never, I don't want to do that anymore, because it was just, it just took a toll. So I, I now, you know, as you become more seasoned, you, you can kind of separate, okay, we're, this, we're acting over here. When, when the cut comes, I can, I can get out of it. You know, I'm not one of those people just like walking around set like, don't call me by my real name. Call me by my character. No, it's just, you know, we're, we're, we're good. But, uh, and I think everybody did. It's, you know, I think everybody was, was good on that. Even Ruth, she, she was very playful on set, you know, uh, in between. So it wasn't like this whole, everybody was in this solemn mood the whole time. It was, it, pretty, it was a pretty light set, to be honest with you. You know, it was pretty lighthearted set. We, we hung out, we ate dinner, we joked. I mean, it was 
we were really light. So, and, and that probably gave way to the performances too, right? I mean, because sometimes you can carry the weight of it so much that you, you don't want to mess up and use too much pressure. We kept the light. So, you know, hence you got loving. <laughs> so what have been some of your favorite roles when you were around what are some of your favorite roles that you acted in throughout your career to name today? Great, uh, man, that's a, that's a great question. I, that's, Stevie, that's great. Um, you know, I always say, like, the, the, whatever the next role is going to be is probably going to be, you know, I, I look to the next roles, but if I, if I have to look back, it's not even, it's not even a thing I did on TV. It was a stage piece. It was a, it was a character named um, Melvin Peterson, who who was as a, a soldier's play. We did that. It was That was back in 2008, 2007, somewhere in there. And that was probably my favorite character because that was the first time I really ever jumped like, ah, into a character. And that's the one that I, I couldn't separate from. And it, it drove me a little nuts. And, you know, and it was like, oh, my God. But I, it was we had so much fun in the rehearsals, the process of getting to the stage, and just the performance itself is probably my favorite, favorite one to date, if I had to say. Now, which do you prefer? Do you prefer more stage acting, like in theater and real time? We know there's a big difference, but there's a set of things. But in on stage, it's like, okay, when that director says, okay, go, well, the audience will catch on if you mess up anything. So which do you prefer the most? Right. So prefer it's a, on stage or on stage? I have different preferences. I prefer film and television. Just because it's a, it's a different medium. I prefer that. Where I have the most fun probably is live stage because it's so sporadic. It's, it's spontaneous. You know, anything can happen. So you just got to be, you know, you're kind of on your toes the whole time. So it's not like you can, you don't have another take. You don't have somebody to say cut. You just, you know, whatever happens, you got to go, okay, I'm in it tonight. You know, the audience is buzzing. You can hear them from the curtain. They're coming in. You, you can't see them. And you walk out, and that light hits you, and then you just feel the energy. You know what I mean? They're hanging on to, like, every word. So stage is probably you feel it more. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a more rewarding feeling. Um, film is probably, you know, it's, it's, it's a, probably an easier medium to do. <laughs> it's like, you know, you sustain a performance for 30 seconds and then people think, you, you know, you might be the best actor in the world, you know what I mean? But stage, you can't fake it. You know, ain't no cut. And it's in real time because if you mess up, the audience will catch on to it real quick. And yeah. Yo Thornton says that I did pull just play, played Corporal Cobb. He, he, he played, uh, who was it? Corporal Cobb. You play cop. I didn't know that. Man, look at you. See, we cousins. We play soldier play. See that? We cousins. Joe, that's a good. That's a good role. That's a good role too. Now, which acting technique do you think is best for you? Which one do you like best? Ooh, I've I've, I've pretty much dabbed in all of them. I kind of combine them. I really do. I don't. I don't stick to a Stanislavski. I don't stick to a Maya Duda Hagen. You know any of that. I just kind of go. I take bits and pieces from each. Yeah. You know the fourth wall or the, the you know the the internal. I, I take everything. I'm, I'm a conglomerate of of all of those. So I don't. I don't just go. If you don't do Meisner, it's no good. It's, I, you know, that's out of the, just. If you if you studied anybody, as long as you studied the craft and you're doing your job and. I don't care who you study. Some people, you know, some of the best actors didn't even study acting. Let's, you know, let's keep that. <laughs> let's keep that one in there. So some of the best actors that we've seen, they, they didn't go to any. Not saying the classes and things are not important because they are. Yeah. But um, you know, they didn't. They don't. They don't harp on that. But if you get, if you do live theater though, if you do theater, you're probably going to be a a really dope actor going into the TV medium. When you when you know how to blend those two, and I, I believe it was Taraji P Henson. She said something when she was doing her role of Cookie on Empire. She said, uh -huh. "If it doesn't scare me, I don't want to do it." So when it comes to taking roles, stepping out of your comfort zone, she's all about it. And there are so many actors out here that are just like, "Give me something challenging." What is the yeah. most challenging role that you've ever played? That you said, "Okay, I really need to tap into." 
I played a soldier. This is a great question. I played a soldier named, um, there's a real guy, and um, uh, Andre, and it's a, a, a movie. And, and since we're on the strike, I, I can't, but it was a movie on Netflix, right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I played the soldier, and that was because I had to get in, in this shape, you know, this, what the soldiers look like. I had to get into a soldier's mind, and of what was going on in the movie, you got to kind of trick yourself and be like, oh, my God, like, you know what I mean? And we shot, we shot this film overseas. You know, we shot it in Jordan, in Oman, Jordan, and, and Bangkok, and, and uh, Rio de Janeiro, all of these places. And so that was challenging because I never shaved my head before. Never been bald. I had to be bald for this role. Um, you know, had to wear all of this heavy gear, it's hot. It's like 110 degrees outside every day. So the sweat that you see, that's real sweat. They ain't have to come spray us. So we were, we were really out there, like really out there. So that was, that was challenging but fun at the same time. What's up? What's up? Who was that? Uh, Diamond Hood Grown. Okay. What's yes. up? Yes. Always supporting, always supporting love. Now... What did your what did your family say about seeing you in this new transformation of this way? Because as an actor, you have to be able to change up your look for your character. The director yeah. might call for you to say, "Okay, we want you to gain weight." Um, for one, I did my favorite was going to be old. The director wanted me to cut my hair, so he wanted me to have oh. like a pixie cut. As you guys can see, my hair is long today. He wanted me to have a short look because he didn't. I was playing a college professor. And he said, we're going to leave you a little bit. So this is a little bit out of my element. So what did your family say when you changed your look for this moment? You know what? It's, um... It was it was fun. It was funny because they, especially my my daughter at the time, she was she just turned ten. So at the time, I think she was six or seven somewhere in there, and um, maybe six. And she she's so used to seeing me, you know, either hair and, and you know, mustache and things. And my son too, you know, he's he's seven, and at the time he was young. And when they saw me, when they you know saw my hair, she just kind of looked at me like, because she didn't see me cut my hair until I came back on a break, and I surprised her at a school. She just kind of looked at me and was like, <laughs> like what happened to your head? But uh, you know, they 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 got used to it. It's it funny to to see them see you know see me on screen or or develop into a character because they now they kind of understand it. And they go, Daddy, did you, you know, when you when you did that voice, that, that you sound like the character Ralphie when you did that. You sound like this. So I'm like, okay. And you change, you change it all. So now you're a family man. You are a family man and you are an actor. How do you find that balance between you? Because I know being in this business, it is about being able to balance out everything. Trust me, mm -hmm. it's all family and having a platform. How do you find that balance? Teamwork, you know, my wife, teamwork, um, it's understanding the job of it, you know, understanding, you know, daddy might have to go and she'll hold down the fort, you know, it's, and, and, and I applaud her. I'm thankful for her because it's, I know it ain't tough. It, it ain't easy. You know what I mean? It, it, I know it ain't easy to, for me to be gone and she's used to me doing certain things and now she has to take that on as well as be mom, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I know that's tough, but teamwork, you know, we, we try to make it work. If it's something that I think I just can't do, you know, it's like, okay, I don't think I want to go and be overseas again for like three months. Not, not at this particular time in my life, you know, so if it's something comes up, I might turn it down, you know, so we talk about it. So if it's a role or something, I'm like, okay, this is what they want me to do. This is what, this is what the role is calling for me and where I need to be. Is it feasible? Can we make that work? You know what I mean? So if it's like, okay, I got to go to Australia for five months, I'm like, eh, either I'm not going to go or I'll say, hey, come with me. You know what I mean? Just y'all come with me, do something like that. But if it's just something that they don't, you know, it's like, okay, we're not going to go to Australia. And I'm like, I don't want to be gone for five months because anything can happen while I'm gone. So I'm like, okay. I just, I mean, look, no, like, like, uh, who, who was it, Jennifer Lewis? No is a full sentence. <laughs> <laughs> they got to respect the no, you know? Um, Chris Green says, Big Will. Listen, Chris Green, I want to I talk about Chris real quick. Chris 
is, is an actor from Loving. Uh, he's an actor from Birth of, Na Birth of a Nation. He's a, I can't even name Chris's resume. Listen, it, it's, it's, it's extensive. And uh, that's my guy. That's my guy. Um, we shot Loving together. That's my, that's my brother. Um, he just did. He, he was, uh, and I think I'm allowed to say this because I, I ain't promoting myself, but he just did Dahmer on Netflix. Um, yeah, he was in Dahmer, and, and, and he did uh, Queen of the South. And Chris, if I'm missing anything, his, his resume is, is very long. I'll be here all day trying to run it. Man, don't talk about me laughing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but no, he, he's a really great actor, really great actor. And um, he teaches at a, at a studio. He's got his own, you know, in, in, in Orlando. Uh, his students are, are great actors. He's a, and, you know, he's an even better person. He's an even better person. You know, we can talk about the acting side all day, but, you know, he's a family man. He's a father. You know, uh, we're, we're in constant contact every day. And uh, that's my brother, Matt. I love him. And, you know, he, if, if you see anything he's in, you will know exactly who I'm talking about. Diamond Hook Hall says congratulations. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, congratulations to, to Chris, me. Yeah. Congratulations to you, <laughs> to everybody. Yes. Um, I don't know if you guys missed it. We are almost about to hit 500 interviews. This would be interview 489. So we are pushing, we are on the line for 500 interviews. And we should probably hit it by the end of this month or sometime in the beginning of the new month. So you guys stay tuned. And the new article is up in one of the most iconic articles that I've ever seen. Um, it is Terry McGuire. Terry McGuire is the pivotal in fashion room. So make sure you guys go and check that article out. You can tell Mac to the UK. And I just seen you flash something at the top of the screen. So I will check that when I get them. But we are about to do a game here with Will. And it's uh -oh. called Etc. Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> our version of this or that. And it's sort of like, okay, you have to tell us if you like, for example, coffee or latte. All right? So those okay, are just I'm down. All right. <laughs> this is gonna be, this is gonna be fun. Turn to the where my guests get to ask me questions. It can be anything fashion related, beauty related. Okay. So whatever you want to know for my new viewers that are watching, you get to find out through Will's questioning. All right. So let's gotcha. get to it. Okay. So which one do you prefer, playlist or podcast? Playlist. Right. Easy. All right. Women pool or beach? Beach. Okay. Summer or winter? Neither. Fall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Farm or city? City. All right. New phone or new clothes? New clothes. All right. Driver or passenger? Driver. All right. Laptop or tablet? Laptop. Okay. Comedy or horror? Ooh, ooh, why you do me like that? I'm glad this ain't drink champs. Oh my God. Um, horror, horror, horror. All right. Now. This one is going to be a little controversial, right? So you put the people watching, they got into it over the comments, so in the, got into it in the comments. Waffle or pancake? Waffles. All right. That was really easy. Or snow? <sighs> okay, I got to get, I'm, I got to, this is a prep. So snow, but not the snow that shuts everything down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. My actors out here that are watching too, and okay, movie or TV show? This is gonna sound horrible. I'm gonna pick one, but I'm gonna tell you, movies. But at this point in my life, neither. I'm, I'm, I'm music. Music is my thing. I will listen to music all day. I don't have to watch anything. I like to do it. I perform it. But music, that's, you know, that's it. Ty Restless says, my guy Will, and he's also coming on the show, I think, sometime next month. Big Ty coming on the show. Ty, what's up, boy? 
Me and Ty, I've been knowing Ty so long. We we did a episode. We did an episode of the show on NBC called Surface. It was that was like 2000. I don't even want to date us, Ty. Jesus Lord, we were, we were young. We you know what we was doing, but we had a damn good time. That's my brother right there. <laughs> um, Chris Green said he prefers movies and show eaten. Of course, yeah. You know, that's a great answer, Chris, because you are supposed to prefer the stuff you win. <laughs> this is a, yeah, so I'm going to say the same thing. Any movie and show that I've ever been in, I, that's my favorite. <laughs> and my friends. Here's the next one. Weekends or weekdays? You know what, man? Um, weekends used to have a better meaning. You know, now they have a more specific meaning because of my kids. Right? Weekends mean daddy time, family time, parks, and things of that nature. So weekends. I say weekends. All right. Pizza or pasta? Pizza. All right. Now this one is going to get a little controversial. All right. Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Dark chocolate because I'm vegan. Okay. <laughs> so I have to eat the, yeah. Jeremy says, I'm waiting for the real dog now. Oh, that's my nephew. What's up, Jeremy? Thank you for watching, man. This is, uh, Jeremy's my nephew, multi-talented. I'm trying to get him to do more. Um, dancer, singer, and just got into the acting game, which he's killing in Virginia. So I'm, I'm proud of him, and uh, that's my guy. So I'm loving what he's doing. I'm waiting to see what he does next. So, so I said, a long time ago, looking forward to working with you again. Absolutely, Ty. How we got to, man. You know, last time we was out there trying to kill aliens in a, in a swamp. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, boy. <laughs> Diamond, put a pork in this for milk chocolate. This oh, Diamond, listen, listen. I loved milk chocolate when I would eat it, you know, but now it's, it's all about the dark chocolate with the sea salt. All right. Unicorn. Unicorn or dragon? Unicorns, because my, my daughter loves unicorns and my dad yeah, ate so unicorns. <laughs> All right. Basketball or football? Basketball. All right. Introvert or extrovert? In between. I can be introverted. I don't always have to be a center of attention. You know what I mean? But I like to talk to people. All right. All right. Coffee or tea? Which do you prefer? Tea. I, I'm not, oh, my God. Oh, coffee. Do you drink coffee? I don't. I honestly don't. Unless it's iced, then that's different. Or the one with, the, with a lot of cre the creamer, the, the vanilla stuff in it. I can do yeah. that. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I can do that, but the coffee is... I don't know how you, I don't know who, oof. Mm. Chris Green says, Will is a hooper, so of course. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, basketball. <laughs> All right, fashion dogs. Ty, Ty said, can he ask a question? Yes, go ahead. That was this or that, our version of et cetera. Hey, that was fun. Yes. I like this or that. You're going to turn the tables. You guys can feel free to ask Will some questions. Okay, so they can, it can be fashion, beauty related, whatever you want to know. And, and I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me get my interview skills on. Hold on. So listen, what got you into, into fashion? Like, what was, what was the first thing that said, Stevie? Ah, fashion. Like, what, what, how, how did you fall in love with, with, with doing fashion and things of that nature? Well, I would have to say my assistant principal in high school, she put me onto it because a lot of people don't know this about me, but I would sketch a lot, fashion illustration. So she saw mm. me sketch, doodling in the lunchroom one day, and she, she tapped me on the shoulder and she said, do you want some Vogue or Hoppus Bazaar magazine? And me not knowing what it was, Amber Combe and Fitch was popping around the top. So right. Give away my age so you guys will know how old I am. But she bought me these big, thick stack of old magazines. When it's like around this time, when it's New York fashion, mm. London fashion, it was like at least 800 pages. I mean, 
this stick. And I'm just like, what am I going to do with it? And I went through it and I was so fascinated by all the different designers and gorgeous fashions and models. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, that's when I fell in love with it. And I said, you know what? Let's take this a step further. And so I started changing up my look. I started experimenting. I've always been one out of my siblings because there's six of them. And oh. I've always been the one that wants to stand out. So you can already right. imagine each of us have our own personality. Me being the one that's going to stand out like a sword. So, Are you the baby? No, I'm not, not the baby. My brother's okay. the baby. You know, I'm about to be 30, so we're in between it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. That that that's what. That, who, who, let me see. If you weren't a professional actor, what other profession would you be? Um, a teacher. And Ty I'll be a teacher. Question two. Ty said, "What male or female actor would you love to work with? Older generation and younger generation." Um, older generation. Uh, of course, Denzel or Morgan Freeman. Mm -hmm. Um. Either one of those two, Lawrence Fishburne, Angela Bassett, pick them, pick, you know, pick one. John Carlo Esposito, you know, all of those, all of those greats that I grew up on, you know, the uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman, you know, the Pacino, that, that, uh, you know, the usual suspects. The younger generation, uh, people that I would want to work with, that I, of course, you know, I want to work with, man, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is is uh, is is so amazing to me. Shia LaBeouf is so amazing. Gugu and Bakara, probably. Um, I would like to work with Anne Hathaway for some reason. It's just I don't know why. It's just I think she's amazing. Yeah, uh, Anne and it's a lot. You know, John Travolta. Jesus Lord, like I I love him. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges is one of my favorite actors ever. In life, he's just like a, he's that burly, you know, that guy. Um, it's, it's too many to name, but the younger generation definitely, like I said, uh, you know, Michael B. Jordan. I mean, he's not really younger. We're in the same age group, but uh, Michael and um, Daniel Kaluuya, I think he's dope, you know. Um, I would have loved to work with Chadwick, rest his soul, you know. I would have loved to have worked with Chadwick, but um, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yes. Um, says, Kid, Kid 48 is my biggest mentor that I think to act in. It's so many people in here. We got Marco Louise, host of One Mic Night Podcast, my boss lady for the magazine that I write for, Original Magazine. Okay. Again, the new article is up on the iconic fashion pioneer himself, Terry McGlair. Um, he left like a legacy and an impact on the fashion. So that article is mm -hmm. up right now. This pen going to put out on my feed. Um, Jeremy said, who would you like to play you in a bio on your life? Who would I want to play me? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. You know, I don't, because I, it, would, it would have to be somebody young. Maybe you. <laughs> maybe you, Jeremy. You play me. <laughs> maybe, maybe you. You would, you, you, would, you would know more. You would tap into it more because, you, you know. I've known you all my life. <laughs> so, Chris yeah, Jeremy. Says, I, Chris Green says, I met Giancarlo. You two could definitely play father and son. I would love to work with Giancarlo, and, and we just lost uh, Ron Cephas, too, man. Um, I thought he was amazing. I had a friend that, that got to work with him on Truth Be Told. He said he was so amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. So those those are those are the people. Chris, of course, Chris and Ty and all those all my guys that I know, Christopher Mann, all of those people. But um, I've been lucky. I've been fortunate. I've worked with some really, really, really great actors. You know, in the it's, I've, I'm, I've been fortunate and blessed. So whoever's the next one, that's who I'm looking forward to working with. Um, Chris says Jarrell Jerome and everybody is agreeing that I I can see that. Oh yeah, Jarrell. You know what, Jarrell Jerome, I, I think he's he's a tough, I, I love him. He, I, wait, is he he's Dominican? I think Jarrell's Dominican or Puerto, one or two. Yeah, I think he's, he's dope. Um, Lakeith, I like Lakeith. Uh, Jonathan Majors, I don't care what all the stuff that's going on with him. I think he's a, a dope actor, you know. <laughs> <Sips T. laughs> Jonathan, I think he's dope. And um, R.J. Siler and um, 
so there's so many great actors that are doing it, you know, from and 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 female actresses, you know, Letitia Wright and you know, um, like I, I mentioned, Gugu and Bathara, and I, I would love to work with Ruth again. Love to work with Ruth again, Ana de Armas, all of those people. So it's a, it's a, you know, I would I would let Stevie. I love to work with Stevie <laughs> and get you in get you in a film. My the only acting role that I've had was in The Assistant Two, which is a horror film, and this is my very first debut ever. When I went to the table read, I was so nervous. I went in with no acting. <laughs> and what's so crazy is my birthday is on Halloween. So oh, okay. the film dropped. Yes. The film dropped that day, the first one, because my co-host was in the first one. And I got casted for the sequel on my birthday. And then oh, wow. we released both. So, oh, my goodness. But the catch was when he told me, oh, my God, you, you can be in the film but we want you to cut your hair for this role. And I said, because uh, at the time, I had at least 30 inches of hair going down my back. And I said, uh, uh, okay, I, I can do this. I can do this because if I can change up my function and change how I looks for the show, then I can do this for the movie. And right. I did it. I executed it perfectly. And you, and, you, and you enjoyed it as a good birthday present. Yes. Yeah. It was I got a question for you. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's still a good role. I got a question for you because uh, you're in the fashion world. When you, um, I, I think I asked you about inspiration, but do you watch, what do you think about the fashion now? You know, because so, so many people, do you think fashion is becoming, is it more a cliche thing? Like some people try to go so left with fashion that it becomes kind of like, I wouldn't touch that, you know what I mean? Or would you keep continue to push the envelope in a in a in a more, I guess, traditional way? You know what I mean? Like when I think about fashion, like uh, like the Madonnas and things that came into the industries and they had their own style. No is, is it is it so different now? You know what I mean? Or is it so much like um, like ah, people are going too crazy with it, or is it or is it a good place? Um. <laughs> Shout out to Bernard Bernard Hugh Sellers, who's also an actor. He asked me that question. Said, okay. What do you think about um, Kanye West's fashion? Because fashion <laughs> so, so I would have to say yes. Some kind of take it and just like I don't get the concept of it. It's not what it used to be. So for me, right. being, I would consider myself as a vintage girl because I love to go back. My thing is, yeah. Fashion repeats it. History repeats it. So I would mm -hmm. have to the late 80s, the 90s, the 70s, the 60s, all of these different areas I go back to when I'm looking at. And I right. used to get the issues of Vogue magazine from like the 1990s up until the So 80s. you can see those styles. Yes. And that's where yeah. I get a lot of inspiration for from the looks that I wear here and my interviews on the show. That's where a lot of that comes from. But I put my own spin into it. So I try to have the curve, but still set my own so do you when you when you do that do you do you vintage do are you a vintage diver do you go to the vintage shops do you go I love going to the consignment store I love looking yeah. online and it's different prices if you go to like okay let's say eBay and then there's uh, someone is selling off the real thing is it a real thing you kind of got to question it but the prices are out and busy. so yeah yes I do yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a um I'm a vintage store diver. I love going to the vintage store. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick story about a, a great vintage store dive. It was Toronto International Film Festival. I had just flown in. Okay, Chris was there. Me and Chris stayed together because our films were debuting there. Uh, a Birth of a Nation premiere and Loving premiere yeah. at the at there. Um, and so we were we were there. And I got in. He came and picked me up from the airport. We were trying to figure out what are we doing that night. So we call, we're calling our managers and we're calling the producers, and there's an in style magazine party that night. I, it's, it's getting late. We, we got something to eat. I have on a white t shirt like I do now. I had on uh, some, uh, <laughs> I had on like some, what do you call them? Like, uh, like khaki, you remember those jogger, uh, khaki pants, like the joggers? 
they, they're like sweats, but they're not. They're kind of like made like khakis or whatever. So I had a pair of those on and like some Chuck Taylors, some vintage blue Chuck Taylors. In no way, shape, or form or fashion am I ready to go to an in-style party, but it's getting late. I don't have nothing to wear in my suitcase. Like, we ain't going back to the room to iron. We found this vintage shop in Toronto, downtown. We go down to the basement. I find this fly jean jacket. I mean, it was so fly. I was trying to find, like, a jacket just to wear, right? Because I was like, okay, I can, I can freak it. So I find this jean jacket to match my shoes, rolled up the sleeves, proceeded to go to the in-style magazine party. Taraji's there, everybody's there, Anne Hathaway's there. And I, there's, I got pictures of me in, in my vintage <laughs> dive outfit at the in-style party. <laughs> it was like, I didn't even, I just, that was on a whim. So I was like, yeah, hey, man, I'm fashionable. Last minute, you got it work with what you got. In <laughs> that store was dope. Yep, we were scrambling. We were scrambling. <laughs> hey, we, hey, that party was so lit, though. Oh, my God, we had a good time. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, I asked us a question for both. Would you consider doing a reality? Um, the only way I would do a reality show if it was if it was like um, if it was if it was centered around like me, it would be like me and my family. But it, they would have to be they would have to agree to it. I'm not putting them in a situation where they don't feel comfortable. So, um, yeah. so it's probably a hard, it's a no for me. That's the only way I would do a reality show. Uh, my wife watches reality shows all the time. She's telling me all the time, she go on Big Brother, and you say, I'm not, I'm not doing that stuff. I mean, it's, it's cool. Whoever does it, does it. And, and, you know, but for me, no, I don't. It's a good question, Ty. I wouldn't do it. Would you, Ty? Would you? <laughs> would you? Stevie, would you go on one? <laughs> um, um, I, I don't think reality TV would be ready for it, Miss Stevie. I'm a little bit too radical. I'm, I'm like, You're a little radical? Oh, well, yeah. You, you, you might, radical. but you you might you might be the person that you know. Yeah, you know, uh, like the Bachelorette or one of the Housewives. I I can't deal with the camera. I, I can't. Yeah, that's you know, and I think that's that's the that's the downfall I think with TV today is like they you know they especially now like, they talk about like the writer strike and the actor strike. Yeah. You know that's what's gonna be on TV if we don't hurry up and get a get some type of agreement. It was 2007, I think that happened. That's when you got all the love and hip hops and everything that came through. That was a yeah. strike. So nobody was writing anything. Or nobody was doing anything TV wise or movie wise. So we got hit over the head with a bunch of catty shows. That, I mean, listen, they're entertaining, but over a long haul, you kind of, you burn out of it. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's not how it used to be. I would say I, I'm a big Real Housewives of Atlanta fan. Yeah, know? yeah. I love Nene Leakes. I love Nene. Yep. Um, but the dynamic of the show is just not the same. Like, and I said this, I had this conversation with my um my brother K Tooks. I said, reality TV show is losing its touch. Like there was a golden age for reality TV. And Real Housewives of Atlanta, the current season was season 15. The dynamic is just not the same. You're taking out some of the old cast members, replacing them with some of the new ones. It's just mm -hmm. a complete different dynamic and oh. you you're like well what happened to the energy that season one was giving the ratings was starting to plummet you you see different things so right yeah can you still would, can you still see me no it's, it's kind of circling right now okay yeah hold on i don't know what happened somebody tried to call me let me go to do not disturb and uh i'm oh Oh, am I not? No, no, I don't want to leave. Well, I'm, I'm, look, stay on. I'm, I'm coming. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm going to add. Wait a minute. It's blurry for me or Will? Okay. All right, I'm coming back. Okay. Am I back? No, I don't see you. At the screen, it's, it's still circling. It's still circling. Hold up. You can hear me, though, right? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> I, had to, I had to go to, uh, hold on. I'm going to request to join. Hold on. Uh-oh.
Um, Chris Green says, "Will all like me? Technology don't work for." <laughs> I'm coming back. In. Can you? Can you? You got me? Yes, I'll add you back. Okay. Okay. Got you. I'm. I'm in here. Tell me if you can see me. Cause I can't see. It. It's. It's coming up. Yeah, it's buffering. I can't. I can't see you. Are we? But let me. Let me. Let me do this. I don't know what's going on. What in the hell? I'm back. Not, not yet. It's still black at the bottom. Well, what the heck? He got that Daddy Riley technology. <laughs> Y'all are horrible. Hold up. Oh my goodness. I can't do anything right. My I'm technologically. The request. See, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it real quick because it it won't let me come back in. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and drop, and then I'll add you back up. Okay. All right. So click right. the add, and then I'll add you back up. Yep, I'm out. Yeah. You guys can hear him, but you can't see him. So we're going to add Will back. Yes, yeah, so he's got to come out and then come right back in. Uh, make sure you guys follow Marco Luis, host of the One Mic Night podcast. Great podcast, amazing conversation. And also, make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. EST. Me and my co-host, Manny Killer, will be back for a new episode. This will be episode four of Ted a Tet. And throw a black, black hat in the air. <laughs> okay, let me add Will back. Let me see. Let me add Will back. He's going to be coming back. So I'm going to add him back. And then we can continue on, Fashion Doll. All right. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. EST for our exclusive sit-down interview. Well, 4 p.m. with Stephen Littles will be joining me. And at 3 p.m., make sure you guys also tune in for a new episode of Ted to Ted. All right. So. Let me see if we can get Will back in here. I don't see him in the box yet. Let me see. Nope, he's not back yet. All right, let me add him, he's back. Okay, I just seen Will. I don't know what happened to him. Hmm, that's odd. I know. That is so odd, because I just seen him pop up in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is start a new live and come right back and add Will.